So uh, in this talk, I will talk about the Fedora Core OS, which is kind of sister brother, whatever you say, of Fedora Silver Blue. And uh, we will see why the Fedora Core OS is best for running your containers. Uh, before talking more, I, I'd like to know who all are using Fedora, or at least know or ever used Fedora. OK, that's nice. And uh, uh, who know about Fedora uh, Atomic Host? OK, that's nice. And uh, about Container Linux? OK, that, that's, that's actually good. Um, it's not like we don't have anyone here who knows about it, so it's like good good audience. OK, so we'll see what Fedora Core OS is and uh, uh, which all features it provides to you and why it's best host for our containers and uh, uh, where exactly we stand today uh, in Fedora Core OS and uh, how you can get involved if you're interested or if you want to try out. Okay, so Fedora Core OS, uh, it's a minimal operating system uh, optimized for running containers and uh, its, uh, its uh, goal is to automatically update your system. So yeah, there are three things, and uh, let me clear. Uh, it's uh, it's for server. Just in case you are confused, why we have both silver blue and Fedora Core OS. So this Fedora Core OS is mainly focused for this running on the server, uh, which is targeting to run basically containers and containers workflow. Uh, so uh, the main the main importance here is that uh, you would like to run clusters of containers. Uh, so that's where you should use it. Or if you want to run a single node container, uh, that's also you can use this system for. And uh, it's basically mainly designed to do your container workflow in clusters of uh, clusters. And if you can run on top of, it's optimized to run the Kubernetes class, Kubernetes on top of it, or maybe without Kubernetes also, it will just run fine. Um, so also, it's the project is under Fedora umbrella, so you you can think that it's what you get in the regular Fedora, like whatever RPMs you have we build in Fedora, which is get signed and all are like from trust, trusted place. So this uh, Fedora chorus also you make you use of all the packages which we have in Fedora. It's just that uh, the packages it does not directly consume. It's just it uses RPM OS tree, uh, which creates a tree of the whole. Uh, whole packages uh, into a uh, object format. Uh, the format is OS3, which is used internally, and uh, that's how you have the operating system. We'll see more uh, later on. Also, the Fedora Core OS is optimized for RH Core OS. Uh, so, if you haven't really used uh, RH Core OS, uh, then uh, maybe you can try this and get a feel. But it has some broader scope than what we have for RH Core OS. Okay, yeah, I think uh, by looking at this uh, picture, you can get some idea about what Fedora Core OS is. Um, so if it's just like, it's the combination of what we have from Fedora Atomic Host and what we have in uh, Container Linux. So um, I will tell you, we want here in the Fedora Core OS that we want to keep the community which we have in the Fedora Atomic Host and from the community from container Linux. So we want to keep the community, grow the community, keep the, our users so that everyone is happy and we have a good, good uh, Fedora Core OS uh, for all the users. Um, so we'll see how uh, exactly these, uh, these features from Fedora Atomic Host and Fedora uh, and the container Linux fits in together in Fedora Core OS. Uh, let's see first the features of uh, the operating system itself. Uh, uh, so the, this operating system is based on OS3 and uh, RPM OS3 as we talked before. And it's uh, an immutable host, uh, which means that um, we, the, the slash USR, uh, which is majorly the main part of your operating system, uh, it's a it's a read-only file system for the sorry not read-only file system for entire operating system. It's read-only file system for slash USR. So all the binaries which we 
which is created from the generally RPMs or anything is slash user bin or it will be slash uh, as slash user as bin or anything else. So basically, all are in read mode. So so that this is to help you to not do any accidental damage to your system. And because we want to run in an automated fashion and in the container workflow, where we basically want to create once the uh, we want to create our infrastructure once and we want to keep it, keep it running uh, without much intervention, without breaking it so that our clusters and everything keeps running smoothly like forever. We'll see why, we, why I'm saying forever. Okay, and uh, uh, <laughs> okay, so it uses uh, ignition. Uh, so uh, if you are from container Linux world, you already know the ignition. This this is being used uh, during the boot time. So when the first time the system gets booted, uh, during the in the RAM phase, uh, it it has the ignition and it checks the ignition config and it will do the configuration like disk partitioning or uh, user creation. All the stuff will be done at when the system first boots. Uh, so that's the advantage. The advantage of this uh, ignition is that. Uh, if you if you have a good a, a good configuration of ignition, then everything will happen before the system boots because uh, you are this is running at the init RAM FS phase where system has not really got transferred to the user space. So if uh, if something goes wrong, basically your system that won't come up. So either you have a running system or you don't have a system. So it's not like in stale state, like when you use cloud in it, uh, you may have a running system, but it may not be configured properly if something in the cloud in, cloud in it doesn't go well. So these kind of uh, stuff get like, you, you don't have to worry about those, either you get a good system or you don't get a system. So that really helps. Uh, also, the uh, another feature of uh, this is uh, rolling release. Uh, this is uh, from the motivation from the container Linux. Uh, in container Linux, as I think you said that we have three channels like alpha, beta, and stable. So uh, these channels, you get uh, different the alpha is like the fix which is about to come. And then beta is like a bit more baked in than stable is what is like even more well tested. So we have different, different approach of getting how stable you can get. Uh, so similarly, uh, in Fedora uh, Core OS, there will be three streams. It will be next, and uh, there will be a testing, and there will be stable. So <laughs> I heard a bit, it's a bit different meaning. Uh, stable is what you have very stable. Uh, testing is what which is going to come next uh, in your step in moving to stable. So a bit better, a bit maybe less tested you can say which is my may you can find some bugs during testing then it won't go into stable so it will get get fixed before that so and the next is that what's going to come next like uh, right now is uh, fedora 29 and we are going to have fedora 30 so so if suppose we have fedora core os today the stable will be from fedora 29 and uh, the Fedora, the next will have the packages from Fedora 30. So you will know that what's going to come next. Uh, so you will give the feedback to us in advance and all will have the CI and all will be well tested. So these all three streams uh, will be released uh, mostly like two in two weeks. So you keep getting, giving us good feedback from the beginning. And if there is some security issues or something comes, then we will apply all those fixes on all the three branches. So we'll try to keep everything stable so you users are like can run some wherever they want like they can have some notes on stable some notes on testing and some notes on next so that you know how the next is going to look and uh, what you should ha be having in the stable so so that this helps to keep your system always stable and without breaking and yeah and yeah one one feature i just mentioned is the no python because uh, we really Python is like everywhere, but uh, in Chorus we are trying to keep things minimal, so we don't really need Python there. And the main reason is that Python makes things; it just reduces the image size also, and uh, you don't have to worry about the Python whole stack. So this really reduces the a bit risk. You don't have to care about the security 
um, security issues which came to Python and uh, it keeps things minimal and we are trying to work on that uh, to have no Python. Okay, so where all it should be available? Uh, we are targeting mostly from running, you can run in your bare metal system by installing ISO or through PXE and uh, it can also own in a virtualized environment like QMU or Libvirt, uh, QMU and VirtualBox and also to the various different cloud providers uh, like GC, GC and AWS, Azure and uh, OpenStack, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we are also targeting the x86 architecture and uh, other two are like Arc 64-bit um, and PowerPC 64-bit LE. Uh, so uh, currently the mode work is towards x 64 but people are uh, currently heavily uh, also <laughs> trying to do the things on Arc 64 and PowerPC. So they are also going really well. It will take some time and let's see how, how and when we get all the three architectures in one place. But x 64 is like, first we want to get in that architecture. Okay, so we have seen all the features uh, which this operating system provides to you. So why this is really best host, you should consider to run your uh, your containers, uh, this is because this is minimal. As I told, we don't have any extra packages other than what you require for running the containers. Uh, it also provides you the, it also provides you the, all the container runtimes which is required to run, run the container like Docker, uh, also Podman um, so, and uh, the run C. So you don't need to really install anything else. And, and in Silver Blue, we have seen that we also support package layering, but uh, here we really don't encourage people to do package layering. Uh, if, if we need to do some package layering, it may be some case by case basis. But we don't do that. Uh, the reason is that we, don't, we want to run it in a place where we do, you don't have to keep uh, interve intervening your system. It should be like running every time without any problem. So if you have more package layer, it can create issues like it, because you are adding more layer and layer. So, and those are not tested by us. We are only testing and the, the base operating system which we are giving and the package layering which we are, you are doing is it's can, it can have some issues. Uh, so really in, in the server, server workflow, we are not really recommend to do the package layering. And yeah, yeah, it has multiple streams. So you, whatever you want to try out, whether testing next or stable, you can try try the feature early. Or if you want to be unstable, you can be unstable. So it really allows you to uh, to stay where you want to go. Yeah, and the current status. Uh, so this is a new operating system which we are designing based on Container Linux and Fedora Atomic Host. So this is not really currently released. Uh, we have Fedora Atomic Host in 29, if you want to try out, and if we have Container Linux also, if you want to try it Container Linux, so you can go ahead and try those and get a feel of that. Uh, and this uh, Fedora CoreOS is like currently in the in development phase, and uh, the target is to have it after Fedora 30. So when the Fedora 30 will release, uh, we'll take the package from Fedora 30 and updates are available in Fedora 30 and use that and bake that into the, as a preview form. So, uh, so that will help us to get some feedback from users from Container Linux and Atomic Host uh, to know whether, where we are, which features we are missing. So, so that we don't really want to make it stable now and <laughs> break your system later on. It's better to keep it in preview, get the feedback and have most likely we'll have the stable release uh, where you can rely on after Fedora 31, which will be based on Fedora 31 content. And the advantage, okay, I forgot to tell the advantage of different streams. Uh, so like in Container Linux, uh, I think once you install the system on, I think or if you're in beta or any a stable channel, you always get a rolling releases, like uh, never have to switch to any other or upgrade or anything like that, it will keep updating. Similarly here, once uh, we move to the stable release, uh, you can be on stable and if, once you have installed, 
it will keep updating the system every time it have releases like it will have two weeks releases mostly uh, unless there is some security uh, security fixes so we can have some out of cycle releases also so you just install once and keep running keep getting update for a system so you don't have to worry about your system and you can have your own cluster running kubernetes or okd or anything else whatever you want to try the container run container stuff uh, so you don't need, really need to worry about your host just keep running and it will get, keep getting updated when fedora, there is a new release of fedora then we'll update our uh, content based on the new releases and you will be always on the same system and we'll try we'll be focusing on making it automatic updated so that you don't really don't have to do anything and uh, uh, we are also producing the artifact currently which is uh, really currently mostly developers are creating it it's not uh, it's not really like very tested or something but if you want to try out uh, you can go and try these uh, from it's in currently built in the uh, center's pipe ci pipeline and they are available i will show the link later on which all artifacts are currently there and also we are very close to shipping no no python in atom in the host uh, I, I i am personally working on that mainly and uh, we have like six or seven packages of python currently available uh, in the host and mostly we have tried to remove whatever the python things are there and some of the some of the packages really are python but uh, we are trying to see if it fits you can use those utilities from the containers so so really on the host no python so it really reduces so mostly we will we will able to achieve its own and uh, we have uh, we have a tracker here for the to dos uh, on what things are completed so if you want to look ahead and get some idea and feel you can see there we have already finished lots of uh, design making decision what we really want to keep in in fedora core is because we have learned from container linux and we learned from fedora atomic host so we want to be better than we take better things and just exclude whatever was not really maybe pain points or something so keep the good things and proceed there and make the fedora core even better so we made a lot of design decisions already and then we are we are working on lots of features already and getting implemented and aggregated and give you a good fedora core as and uh, that's all uh, if you want to get involved there are various ways go to the issue tracker or join our mailing list and uh, yeah there are forum also if you want to ask question go to come go to the community uh, irc meeting also we have uh, apac friendly meeting which we do every two week um, in uh, around five five utc so it will work it is friendly for apac also, we have a regular IRC meeting on every Wednesday uh, around 4.30 UTC. Uh, so whatever time works for you, you can come join the meeting, ask questions, or maybe just ask on mailing list or, or anywhere, <coughs> whatever is comfortable and you can help us. That's all. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll, yeah, so the, these are the artifacts you can see. We are now creating nightly basis there is Kiko 2 and uh, ISO and in the UFI non UFI mode of that uh, that images and uh, yeah open stack image. So so all our all everything is we are using the core OS assembler uh, to build everything. So this is a tool. So really, if you want to try out, this is the best way. All the instructions are mentioned here. So it's really very easy to try uh, i'm sorry i'm at wrong place Th these are the links so basically you it's like a core assembly itself is in a container image so it pulls in and then it does you just do core assembly fetch build and run it creates the compose of os3 on your local system and then you have the artifacts whatever you want you can give the parameters and and try it out and if something is not there you can make a request or talk to us uh, on mailing list or IRC channel and we can may include something which we have not yet planned because we don't know if that's a use case but we are open for everything um that's pretty much uh, any question
That that's uh, on the op that's for uh, contain managing the managing that uh, of that containers right. That's not part of uh, the container Linux itself. Uh, Tectonic is part of uh, on top of uh, on top of the container Linux right. It's a platform for managing yeah helps you to manage your like branches a different organization yeah i know about that but i i think it's like open shift uh, it's yeah anything else maybe silver blue or in general fedora or any question if like not core os maybe you can ask us Uh, we, we have in uh, core os both uh, podman and docker uh, docker mobi or whatever is the open source version uh, so we are keeping both at least for now and uh, uh, mostly the plan is to keep both um, we are we focus more on podman because it's a it's an o oci based and it's like more open to take the feedback and uh, and have the PRs ready and it's really because for docker I, as far as I know for some patches people were ha having hard time to get it merged into docker and also there may be sometimes licensing issue and all but here it's like multiple companies are involved and it's more kind of open space so I feel it's better to move forward Just out of interest, uh, mm -hmm. I saw like a number of uh, like guys in our platform that are working on the project uh, for OS, right? Yeah. Uh, can I come to the board uh, if is that uh, if I can I become raster by um yes you can but for now we don't have any image running because a uh, lot of stuff are coming from container Linux and some stuff are like and we are still working on porting and porting stuff which is fixing bugs and all so it's really in we are trying our best to have that included so once we have arc 64 support available we, we can obviously try on a raspberry pi thanks but the main target is for server side but yeah it's always good because in atomic host we were trying also to run it on raspberry pi because it's easier that people can try general people can try everyone don't have the server anymore okay Uh, so far, uh, we have we don't have any CI. Uh, we are right now working on designing the streams, various streams. We just uh, we just plan which all streams we want and uh, how we want. So the CI part is still needs to be done, but definitely we are going to have. And also we have uh, we have the mantle which have Pola, uh, which does already a lot of uh, testing, like launching. Uh, launch, launching images in a virtual uh, virtual uh, live world or QMO or anything or, or in the AWS or something like that. So I think it's they have very nice testing coverage, black box testing and all. So we will make use of uh, 
uh, cola a lot other than that we'll see at package level uh, we will try like if there is a new package which you want to in so we will have a new artifacts and then we'll try to run the uh, ci on that still in like not like everything is planned at that area Uh, can you can you upgrade uh, new version of docker yeah. Uh, yeah so there is a new version of docker it it first get built into fedora correct so once once it's built into fedora we have a new package so we will take in and we'll use it in the use it in the content uh, the fedora core s it will be available we will be able to update. We will. Be How do you get them to update the version of Docker with the form and the big power of Docker? So on. Yes, so because in the past I know I tend to update the version of Docker when it's big in the form. So we need a lot more than I have to update. So this is part of the operating system itself. So the op the Fedora Core. So when there is a new version update, you don't have to do anything. Uh, it, the operating system itself will pick up that update. It will build a new OS tree update from that, and yeah, it will apply. Yeah. If. Yes. So that's the cost you have to pay if you want to keep the system stable and running for like forever like if it's not well tested then there is chances that your system may not boot or something like that right so we want to make sure that everything is tested we don't want to ship everything to stable it's it's if it's go through testing uh, users if they're using they can know and uh, they can give us feedback that it's not working for their environment in the testing itself rather than running it on the production servers Unless if it's a security fix, uh, we security. If there is a critical security, it will be applied to all the streams altogether after testing. Okay, thank you, Sydney, for a great talk. Thank very you. interesting. Uh, thanks, for, uh, it's a great lesson. thanks everyone for joining.